This video is about Euler's formula, e to the i theta equals cosine theta plus i sine theta. The physicist Richard Feynman called this one of the most remarkable, almost astounding formulas in all of mathematics. And it is fascinating just to look at it, but it's also fascinating to see how many ways it can be derived. I've provided some links to a couple of videos that describe two different ways to derive Euler's formula. One uses Taylor series expansion, and the other uses a differential equation. But to me, the most intriguing way to come up with this formula is with pure algebra. And this is described by Dr. Feynman in his book, The Feynman Lectures on Physics, Volume 1. He has this really cool chapter called Algebra, where he develops the building blocks of algebra from first principles. And at the end, he shows how Euler's formula can be created using only algebra. In this video, I'm going to pick up somewhere in the middle of his lecture and then cover the most important highlights. To get started, we need to create a table that starts with 10, and then each successive row is the square root of the previous row. Dr. Feynman is working with first principles, so at this point in the lecture, he has already established the building blocks to do square roots. So in this table, we have the power in the left column and 10 raised to that power in the second column. In the first row, we have 10, in the second row, we have the square root of 10. In the third row, we have the square root of the square root of 10. I'm going to use some Python code to fill out this table with plenty of precision. If you're not a programmer, don't worry about it. What's important is the output. So I have a variable 10 to the s that I initialized at 10. Then I loop 29 times. And each time through the loop, 10 to the s gets replaced by the square root of its previous value. So let's run the program. The left column is the power, and the right column is 10 raised to that power. These numbers get more interesting as we scroll down to the end. If you look closely, you may notice that it appears that the fractional part of the second column is equal to the first column multiplied by some constant, and it looks like the constant is 2 point something. So let's explore this a little further. I'm going to do something a little strange, but it'll make sense in a minute. I'm going to add a column to the table that is 1 plus 2.302585 times the exponent. Now let's add this to the Python code. So here's the extra line of code. I've, I've called the new variable column three for lack of a better name. And let's run the program. You can see that the second and third columns start to converge. And as we scroll down to the bottom, you can see that the two columns become equal. So now we have a very interesting result. For very small powers of epsilon, 10 to the epsilon is equal to 1 plus k times epsilon, where k is equal to 2.302585. But this would be a lot more elegant if we could get rid of that pesky constant k. And we can do that by changing from a base of 10 to something more natural. And we can do that as follows. Let's let epsilon equal n over k. Then substituting, we get this equation. And this can be rewritten as follows. Now let's call the value in the parentheses e. Then we get e to the n is equal to 1 plus n for very small n. Now remember, Dr. Feynman is proceeding from first principles. So at this point, he demonstrates that we can calculate e from the table of square roots of 10. This is a very tedious process, so I'll just cut to the result. e equals 2.7183, and we recognize this as Euler's number. So now we have something really useful. If for small numbers e to the n is equal to 1 plus n, then what about e to the i theta? Well, this works for imaginary numbers as well. So if theta is very small, then e to the i theta is equal to 1 plus i theta. And if we have one accurate number for e to the i theta, then we can find all the other imaginary powers of e by finding multiples of the initial number. So let's create a table starting out with a very small theta. I'll start out with theta equal to 1 over 1024 squared. In the left column, theta is doubled in each successive row. 
which means that in the right column, each successive row will be the square of the previous row. Let's complete this table with some Python code. Here's the code. I have a variable called e to the i theta that I initialize to 1 plus 1j over 1024 squared. In Python, we use j instead of i for imaginary numbers. Then we loop 20 times. Each time through the loop, we simply set e to the i theta equal to the square of the previous value. So let's run the program. And here's what we get. We have theta ranging from 1 over 1024 squared all the way down to theta is equal to 1. Now we would like to plot these numbers, but currently they're too spread out. If we want a nice plot of e to the i theta, we need to make a table of equally spaced numbers. So what we're going to do is take this number e to the i over 8 and make a table of multiples of this number. So let's start a new table. Here's the start of the table. In the first column, we keep adding 1 eighth to theta. This is equivalent to multiplying each successive row in the right column by e to the i over 8. If we do this about 50 times, then theta will range from 0 to close to 2 pi. So let's compute these numbers and plot them. Again, I have a variable called e to the i theta that I initialize to 1 plus 0 j. I have another variable called factor that I initialize to the number we found for e to the i over 8. Each time through the loop, I set e to the i theta equal to its previous value times factor. Then I add the real part of e to the i theta to the list x and the imaginary part to the list y. So let's run the program. And here's the exciting result. The real part of e to the i theta is in red and the imaginary part is in blue. As you can see, the real part is exactly the cosine of theta and the imaginary part is exactly the sine of theta. And remember that these functions were created with algebra alone. So now we can put it all together. We now know that x equals cosine of theta and y equals sine of theta. So substituting, we get Euler's formula. Now remember we started with this green formula on the left, this very simple harmless looking formula. We initialized it with a very small value of theta. Using this initial value, we were able to obtain other values of e to the i theta and plot them. And as if by magic, the cosine and sine functions appeared. Towards the end of the lecture, Dr. Feynman says this, we summarize with this the most remarkable formula in mathematics, e to the i theta equals cosine theta plus i sine theta. This is our jewel.